Hey Alexa, could you turn on the nuke? Did you mean blue screen? Yes. Okay. Alexa, turn on the freezer. Okay. During this weekend, I had to install Windows 95 on this HP machine that some of you already happen to know. And my idea was to turn this thing into a smart home device, allowing me to launch games and play music by having my Amazon Alexa device dial into this thing and run the required commands. It's a thing that's entirely possible, but I realized that this would take too much time to pull off, and on top of that, just installing Windows 95 on this thing turned out to be easier said than done. If I wasn't dealing with some sort of file system corruption, I would be met with a 40 RAM module. And if I wasn't dealing with a 40 RAM module, I would run into a driver related issue with my onboard sound card, turning the system into a blue screening mess. Ah. Uh. I managed to make the system run somewhat reliably by leaving my floppy drives disconnected and making use of a separate sound blaster card. And finally, having set up a network drive, I was finally able to get some programs installed. And while doing so, a train of thought has hit me. Since this computer likes to blue screen that much, why don't we just use Alexa as a dedicated blue screening device? Time for the intro. If you ever heard of con slash con, you probably know how easy it is to make a Windows 95 machine blue screen. Just type in con slash con whenever the system needs you to provide a file path. You can even provide con slash con as a boot parameter to have your system unalive itself during its initial start. While UI design usually wants to cater to end users and their beauty standards, the Win9X blue screen was low-key made to jump scare you. You can be in the very middle of something, trying to get something done and then all of a sudden you see your system switch into a different video mode just to tell you that some random VXD file at a random memory location has made an oopsie. While I call myself a retro computing enthusiast, I did not manage to overcome that blue screen phobia of mine. Anyway, while the con slash con approach usually requires some degree of user interaction, you can achieve the same effect by launching a so-called win nuke. If you have seen a previous video of mine, you already happen to know what the SMB protocol is. It's the stuff that allows you to do file and printer sharing and happens to be pre-installed on every blank slate Windows machine since Windows 2000. And while Windows 95 does not utilize the SMB protocol for file and printer sharing, it can still perform this task by using the similarly flawed NetBIOS protocol. And when feeding the computer's NetBIOS listener with garbage data, this results in a blue screen. And I managed to compile and run an old piece of source code in order to have a Linux machine of mine perform this garbage feeding. The thing is, I have already streamed stuff like this, but uh, it, it, it's not as rewarding as just doing it in a, in a private group. Oh, blue screen. Blue screen, okay, blue screen. And while digging for similar exploits, I have also stumbled upon a file called jolt.c. It was written by Jeff W. Roberson back in 1997 and he asks you to give him credit if you happen to use his code. So Jeff, if you're still among us, here's that credit of mine. If your Windows 95 computer happens to use TCP IP, it will usually respond to a ping request. And just like any other data packet sent via TCP IP, that data packet will remain in the receiving machine's memory until it has been dealt with. While a ping request usually happens to be a really small packet, you could, if you want to, blow it up in size and see what happens. Okay. Okay. Oh. 
and this is what Jeff's code allows us to do. So I ended up pinging the machine so hard that it corrupted the machine's system kernel. When suffering a Renuke, Windows 95 has no problem recovering from it. You can still use the machine after hitting a random key and making that blue screen go away, but with a ping of death, that's the official term by the way, only a good old power cycle can undo its effects. Oh my goodness, how does it even look in real life? Oh my goodness. This, this looks so evil. I need to do, do it again. The only thing that is left to do now is to have Alexa perform these attacks, which unfortunately is just not possible. While Alexa loves to leech off of your network's resources in order to be the pretty paperweight she is, she has no intrinsic understanding of anything, including your local network. So even if I create a custom skill for her, it would, just like Alexa herself, run on Amazon's infrastructure. But we all happen to know these people who are both rich and consumerist enough to have Alexa control their local household items. So how does that work? Alexa, schalt Nebel an. So-called smart home devices are usually connected to the remote infrastructure of their respective masters. Not you, of course, but the companies that sold them to you. And depending on the model and manufacturer, you can add a skill to your Amazon Echo account, linking both the smart home device and your voice-powered assistant to each other. And there's one particular Amazon Echo skill that allows you to run your own remote infrastructure, and that is called OpenHab. Yeah, it's German. It, it, it must be German. It's like... <laughs> they can't even supply Nano in their f***ing Docker abomination. A go... Once you have set up an OpenHab instance on a local machine of yours, you can link it with the Amazon skill and boom, you just gaslit her into believing that a trash-picked Linux machine of yours happens to be some kind of smart bridge that is responsible for managing your light bulbs. And the cool thing with OpenHab is that you can set up a whole range of smart home devices that don't even have to exist. Alexa, turn on the freezer. Okay. By creating a few dummy switches, I can now hack OpenHab into making it run custom code whenever these switches are being interacted with. I do believe that sanity is a limited resource and I'm convinced that a few of my sanity points got lost in the process of making the setup work, but I pulled it off and here's the result. Hey Alexa, could you turn on the blue screen? I'm not quite sure how to help you with that. Of course you can. Alexa, could you turn on the nuke? Did you mean blue screen? Yes. Okay. Alexa, could you turn on the freezer? Freezer isn't responding. Please check its network connection and power supply. Hey Alexa? Could you turn on the freezer? Freezer isn't responding. Please check its network connection and power supply. So yeah, if I have satisfied your demands for blue screens and other sorts of memory corruption, there are some buttons that you might want to click. Ugh. And by the way, I'm currently producing even more blue screen ridden content pieces for you to watch, but script writing and editing happen to be work, the unpaid kind of work. And while unpaid work usually grants you some kind of exposure, let's face it, we've all been through that, not even that is guaranteed on this platform. And being someone's husband, I'll be given a hard time justifying my priorities and the time that I'm willing to invest in this gamble, rightfully so. And since my last video hasn't resulted in a single red cent, an opportunity to work in exchange for a single red cent allow me to be more specific. A donation or a channel membership is not about helping me cover a bill or two. Okay, it is about that, but it's just the mere tip of the iceberg. If you guys can help me stay afloat until I have become self-sufficient in the things that I do and like to do, you don't only contribute to the rest of this iceberg, you will also allow me to tell my wife that I was right the entire time. Thanks for watching.